and the Word was God. In the beginning was the Word. Now, I told you last Sunday that I remember a few words from my Hebrew classes at seminary, and the second and other, well, one of the other words that I remember is the word dabar, D-A-B-A-R, dabar, which in Hebrew means word. In Greek, the word for word is logos, logos. Now, logos means word, but it doesn't mean word like a written word so much as it means something like a a thought or something that's said by implication, also a reasoning or a motive. In classic Greek, thought, sorry, in classic Greek, the thought was that this principle referred to divine reason, imminent in nature, yet transcending all oppositions and imperfections in the cosmos and in humanity. It was in Greek, an eternal and unchanging truth present from the time of creation and available to every individual who seeks it. Logos, an imminent truth. For as we in the gospel of John has been described as divine expression, Think of this, in the beginning was the divine expression and the divine expression was with God and the divine expression was God. The divine expression was in the beginning with God and all things came to be through the divine expression and without the divine expression, nothing came into being. What came into being was life, and the life was light, the light of all people. And this light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. In our Eucharistic prayer, which we will hear in a few moments, we say these words, we pray these words, we give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation and the calling of Israel to be your people. And in your word, in your word, your divine expressions spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the divine expression, Jesus, your son. Jesus, the word made flesh. I wonder, there are so many words to describe this divine expression. I think of Handel's Messiah, Jesus, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the mighty counselor, almighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of peace. And other words to describe this divine expression, friend, counselor, shepherd, love, a dance, the great I am, the all in all. And I'm sure if we had more time or if you had paper and pencil, you might want to jot down other words that describe this divine expression of the beginning, was with God and was God. But no matter what words we use for this divine expression, what's most important is the relationship, the connection, the dance, with the divine expression, the word, God, love. Our expression needs to be more than just gazing at the holy baby in the manger or sitting at the foot of the cross and watching Jesus give up his last breath or standing outside the tomb that is empty or seeing the resurrected Jesus as he's with his disciples sharing bread with them. Our connection to the divine expression needs to be like the great commandment, the Shema, that we are experiencing God with our heart and our soul and our mind and our strength. All of our being connected to that divine expression and transformed because of the interpersonal interaction that we have 
with God and Jesus and the Holy Trinity. There's a beautiful story you may have heard about a little girl. She's about four years old and her mother's expecting a baby and, and the mother tells her that this little baby is gonna to come to them as a gift from God and that this gift from God will be a member of their family just like she is. And sure enough, the baby arrives and it is a boy. And the parents are a bit worried because they don't know how their four-year-old daughter is going to react. So they, they read all the books, right? They read all the books on how to assimilate this new baby into the family and to be able to parent two children now so that the four-year-old doesn't feel like she's being pushed aside. Well, it turns out that this four-year-old has an unusual request a request that her parents really aren't sure how to deal with. It's not in the textbooks, you understand. It's not anywhere that they've read because this little girl keeps asking to have some time alone with her new baby brother. Now, the parents are worried because they're afraid of what that four-year-old might do to her little brother, this one who's getting all of the attention. And so they're not really sure about leaving the sister alone with her little, little newborn, but, but they set up a baby monitor and probably have the, you know, the video set and the audio set and they sit in the other room and they allow for this little girl to go in to the bedroom where her baby brother is and talk to him while he's in his crib. And still the parents are sitting outside in the living room watching and listening and, and they're incredibly nervous. And their little girl, the four-year-old, leans into the newborn's crib and she says to her new baby brother, Tell me about God. I've almost forgotten. Tell me about God. I've almost forgotten. In the beginning was the word. In our beginnings was the word. In the beginning of all creation was the word, the divine expression. And this divine expression became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. And from this fullness we have received, all humanity, all creation has received grace upon grace. It is God's only son who has made God known to us. May we continue to worship and to sing praises and to be in relationship and connection to this divine expression. Amen. <laughs>